This is Adidas's Boost technology. So successful that it has forced many other brands to relook at the way they are doing midsoles, and it has further entrenched Adidas as a true leader in sports performance for a new generation. Tonight we look at the story and find out some of the dirt behind this special tech. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Soul Knowledge, the home of the sneaker story and the home of sports culture insights. I'm your host, Bernie Wickham, and I'm the sneaker evangelist. Adidas had not delivered anything new in many years within the midsole and within the cushioning space. It had still used the very reliable Adiprene and Adiprene Plus technologies. For those of you who are not too familiar on how Adiprene and Adiprene Plus works, I've brought along a visual aid. This is Adiprene, traditionally found within the heel of your shoe. And as you strike with your heel, Adiprene is positioned in the heel to absorb the impact. And this is what it does. No bounce. On the other hand, you have Adiprene Plus. It's always positioned in the forefoot of the shoe so that as you move forward, it actually gives you a bounce and it's a lot more responsive. So Adiprene Plus. The limitation presented with Adiprene and Adiprene Plus was that in relation to its size, it was quite heavy. And Adidas couldn't actually replace the entire midsole with these cushions. And for that reason, they needed to evolve. So Adidas approaches a German-made chemical company called BASF and they ask them to create a compound which is stable, durable, soft and has spring-like properties. Little does Adidas know that Puma is already working with BASF on a similar project. But I gotta make one thing quite clear. Puma had a pre-existing relationship with BASF in the year 2009. Adidas then comes onto the scene later and BASF cancels the relationship between themselves and Puma, but then starts a new one with Addy in the year 2011. Know this, both brands were shown this material. This is BASF's Infinity material, which they created. But both brands take Infinity and create a midsole based on very different ways of thinking. Puma goes on to create energy, and Adidas goes on to create Boost. Both of them, however, did not register their patents on time and in short is the reason why both brands can still use this as a raw material. But here's what's important. When you see a Puma shoe that has a similar midsole, don't knock it because you gotta know where these things come from. Now all of these tiny little pellets are actually brought into one single unit by the help of steam. And once it becomes a single unit, an amazing property begins to develop because as you run, it returns energy to the runner. What that means is that as you keep running, it gives you a sense of a springboard, a boost. And that boost does something amazing. You could run the same distance you would traditionally run with less effort. Or you could use the same amount of effort that you would normally run and run for a further distance, or you could use the same amount and run faster. That is energy conservation that gives back something better to the athlete. So the first shoe Adidas ever introduces which contains the Boost technology is the Adidas Energy Boost. This is the Genesis sneaker, the Adam of the entire story, if you will. And this evening, I have had the privilege of not only having the shoe, but actually the fifth anniversary version of the shoe, which has actually been given to one of Adidas's prime athletes for South Africa. His name is Akani, and um, he's actually here this evening to hand me the shoe. So, Akani, enter right. It's your boy. What's going on? It's your boy. <laughs> So, let me give you a rundown on these sneakers right now. Akani had to leave with the quickness. I mean, the man's the fastest South African in the house with not only holding his personal best, but South Africa's best at 9 seconds and 89 split seconds with the quickness. You can't expect the cat to be here forever. This is the energy boost which went to market for the first time in February 2013. 
Once consumers got a taste of this product, Adidas knew for a fact that they could never look back. This is the future of running a new midsole. Adidas didn't stop working on this technology. Two years later, they had evolved the shoe completely by introducing what they would claim as the world's best running shoe in the year 2015. And this is the introduction of the Adidas Ultra Boost. Adi had basically re-engineered the shoe completely when starting with the Ultra Boost. And in doing so, they focused on three things, the fit, the feel, and the transition. In talking about the fit, they had re-engineered this upper. This is a prime lit upper, seamless in its construction, but re-engineered in such a way that it gives you as much as you need when you need it, and as little as you need where you don't need it on that construct. The midsole provided the feel with boost. The biggest change that now took place was they added 20% more boost when compared to its predecessor, the Energy Boost. And a new innovation that came through in the outsole was the four-way stretch outsole, which needed to adapt to how boost actually works on the athlete's foot. And also uniquely added in is a continental rubber for that outsole. Just a few things regarding the aesthetics. When the designers had a look at this, they've actually looked at the S shape of your foot, the curve of the foot that has actually exaggerated that styling. The color chosen over here is actually the, the positioning from the most energizing times of the day when running. That is the transition from dusk till dawn and from dawn till dusk in that color. And also when understanding how they wanted to position this logo over there, they took inspiration from BMW and the way they highlight the engine capacity. And as a matter of fact, Adidas actually asked BMW for some assistance in landing that Ultra Boost logo in the way it does. Adidas still hasn't found a way to create boost in any other color other than white because they claim that changing the color actually changes the properties of energy return to the consumer. So it only comes in white. I hear some of you immediately saying to me, but Bernie, hold on, there was a triple black version of the shoe. And I will say to you, you are correct. And I'll tell you how that comes about in actual fact. This midsole that Adidas had released has just been painted. It is not a solid black. And if you look at the outsole, you can see how the white is still popping through. So that was just a bit of a paint job but it doesn't actually impact on the performance of the shoe. And obviously, the consumer wants to change the color of that midsole, there's no question. So they've kind of taken it into their own hands. I wanna show you some work done by a guy by the name of Riza Sali in some of his midsole treatments. This is a shoe that I'm actually running in. This is my Ultra Boost. He's taken the same color and give it a black midsole treatment. It looks just absolutely amazing compared to where I'm at over here. But not only that, he's taken the original Ultra Boost the one we showed during the show, and he's also given it a black midsole treatment. Is that not ultra cool? That draws to a close another episode of Soul Knowledge. Thank you so much for watching, and an extra special thanks to Adidas South Africa who's made some of their assets available to us. You are truly valued. Special thanks to Riza Sali who has made his Ultra Boost and a couple of others customs available too. Also, Jason Vessels, who has made the Energy Boost available, and although I did not use the original Energy Boost in this episode, these arrived at my home before Akane did with his five-year anniversary edition. And also, Akane, thank you so much for coming through, having a look at the studio, spending some time with us over here at Soul Knowledge, and sharing your fifth anniversary version of the Energy Boost. Guys, stick around for one more, one sneaker in one second. Ciao.